Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, welcome to RTC. I stumbled with my words there a little bit, but that's nothing new on this show. I'll be talking to you about Fallout 4. A while back, I released a different video about Fallout 4 and talking about it, but I didn't feel too confident about it, and it didn't feel, you know, very well organized and so on. So I, I do a re, I do a retry of it. So today we're going to talk about a little bit of the Fallout 4 backstory, which takes place in Boston, Massachusetts, which we've never been before or even close to it in any of the Fallout franchises till Fallout 3 came out. Fallout franchises, any of the Fallout games. I'm mixing up words today like crazy. Uh, well, you start out in a vault called Vault 111, which in the E3 gameplay footage showed a prequel to the story where you, a prologue to the story which you cra uh, characterated, which now includes a sculpting kind of way of doing it. So instead of just using sliders or whatnot or presets you can sculpt the way your face you want your face to look like and there's also an option to probably sculpt or shape your body as well and of course this applies to female characters as well so once you emerge from vault 111 nuclear war is already ended and gone everything's gone to shit and so civilization's coming back but regarding the backstory to how you survived 200 years is that a year ago kotaku the website known as kotaku got a leaked character um what's a character casting sheet which everyone thought was a was a hoax uh which include a, an actual picture like a little drawn out picture on the top of it of the main character's default look and so on just stating what the introduction was like and everything like that which was pretty much on the ball right there and uh well regarding that it says that your character has been cryogenically stored meaning that there was cryo uh, tubes i'm just going to call them that for now inside this vault so meaning that it was probably one of the last vaults ever made which is more the swankier vaults than anything else because back in washington dc vault 21 no it wasn't vault 21 vault 110 i can't remember the name of the vault but yeah, that's that's very unprofessional. I'm not remembering the name of that one vault um, where you had the virtual reality uh, pods, which kept people preserved and but stuck in a unending hell with their vault tech uh, over overseer who went mad with power. But anyway, let's get on to characters in the games. Since I brought it up during this little conversation, talking characters, which at first I was really fearful of because it took away the immersion. Of a fallout game where you'd have a list of um suggestions or a list of uh, talk options and then you'd pick one after it but there's only four options with a character talking so they're kind of going with a mass effect kind of feel to it when you're talking to char other characters but you'd be able to hear your voice i'm kind of growing it's kind of growing on me at the moment but i hope there really is an option to turn off voices and get the original style of you see all the all the things you want to say to the particular character and whatnot and uh, yeah, the voice actor for the male character is Brian T. Delaney, who is also the uh, voice actor in most Halo games and some other characters in Fallout 3. Mainly NPC, non-important NPCs and probably a few important ones, which I can't remember right now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I can't wait to see how that plays out. And we're going to go right into crafting weapons. Uh, as we learned from the E3 footage that you can craft, there's 50, no, let me rephrase that, you have 50 base weapons and 700 different modifications. That's technically 700 different guns right there, which is going to interest me a lot. I'm going to name one of them there, which was the laser musket that Preston Garvey was using in the Xbox, in the Xbox One press conference at E3, which has showed uh, Garvey using the now, you using the uh, laser musket in Concord in, uh, before you got to the Museum of Freedom. And it's a crank-based weapon, which you crank it up a certain amount of times to get a more powerful shot, which is very interesting. And during the leak footage from Gamescom in Cologne, Germany, um, we saw that there was a different variant of the crank musket, which was the uh, musket shotgun of some sort, which was very interesting to see as well. Also, I've noticed in um, watching over the E3 footage that when you see the character at the crafting table and he's crafting a weapon, down at the bottom right, I believe, there's an option to rename your weapon. So they bring in a little bit of an element from Skyrim, which you could rename weapons 
and whatnot. But does this, does this idea of like we get to rename our weapons and build our weapons up, does that mean unique weapons are not going to be found during the game? Of course, with um, with the game, there's going to be weapons we've never seen before if we bring up DLC, which I will get back to uh, in a little bit. But would this actually really... What would really be the point of having a new, unique... Ugh, sorry, <laughs> stumbled up my words again. Um, a unique weapon like that. If you can make a unique weapon, but not find one in the game, would there be any point of having unique weapons in the game? Would you be able to modify them? Would you be able to take them apart and put their modifications on a base weapon? So, um, yeah, let's go into, the, I said it before, DLC, but I'm going to have a little bit before that. Um, right now, Bethesda has released the, he has announced that you can now get a Season Pass DLC. You can get Season Passes for the DLC, the upcoming DLC to follow, which is going to be very interesting to see, due to the, just due to the fact that it's, it's a bit early, in my opinion, that they're already releasing a Season Pass, but if the fans want it, the fans get it, you know? And, um... Not too much information on the season pass. We don't even know if there is going to be DLC made. Bethesda says they're going to be in the works making it. But you could end up buying it and never DLC being made for it or whatnot. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go into a little bit more of uh, the gameplay trailer behind this shows uh, the Brother of Steel in it. And Vertebirds and particularly that uh, crashing airship belonging to, the, belonging to the Brother of Steel, which I'm pretty sure I'm... Yeah, like I believe that it is the Capital Wasteland Detachment in Washington due to the fact that the symbol on the uh, side of the airship is a Brotherhood of Seal marker, yes. But it's pointing to the west, which is the west coast, which Washington, D.C. and whatnot, and the east coast is California. So it makes sense that it's going to be the Capital Wasteland Detachment. Uh, it could not be. It could be the California Detachment got a bit more power over its years rebuilt itself and started to move away the only time we've ever saw airships or um hmm, the only time we saw airships were uh during uh follow tactics where the minority of the brotherhood of steel were told to go and chase after the uh, the super mutant army that was retreating after the master's fall and pretty much they were kicked out of the brotherhood of steel they weren't expecting them to come back alive but due to an accident on the way they crashed in chicago chicago and and thus set up their own Brother of Steel, where they let anyone in, trained them, and had a very a large amount of power during that time. So yeah, uh, another little fact about the um, about the airship is that it's called Pridewin, which is a very interesting name. If you relate that to history, uh, and you bring up King Arthur, for example, King Arthur's uh, ship, his longbow, was called Pridewin. And the only other character that we met during, uh, well, during Fallout 3, before... Follow four was Arthur Maxon, or Arthur the Tree as well. I think that's his name as well. But I'm mainly going with the Brotherhood of Steel names. But there was Arthur Maxon, who was the descendant of Roger Maxon, the founder of the Brotherhood of Steel, back uh, in California. And uh, I'm thinking now is Arthur Maxon some sort of elder now, or is he a high-ranking paladin with the Brotherhood of Steel detachment? Is Sentinel Lions the Elder Lions's um, daughter in charge of the Brotherhood of Steel, Brotherhood of Steel right now? So that, that well, we find we'll probably find that out when we get a chance to play the game. And bringing up the Brother of Steel as a faction, there's also the Commonwealth Minutemen, which I pro which I spoke about Preston Garvey and his laser musket earlier on, who is the leader of the Minutemen. Uh, with the as Preston Garvey's the leader of the Minutemen, there's a lot of American Revolutionary War, uh, ideas popping around here, which it's pretty much confirmed that the. Due to Boston's heavy history of the American Revolutionary War, uh, the Minutemen during that time of the actual revolution were known as the militia, which they could be formed in a minute's notice to go to battle. So hence the nickname that stuck with, which was the Minutemen. But bringing up other possible factions, which I saw during the E3 uh, game concept of a uh, game concept art of Fallout 4. There was one little flashing screen which had like a very raider looking kind of guy with an earring and a type of British colonial military hat on, a little lapel kind of a scarf on and a red coat, which I thought he was a pirate because uh, seeing the ship during that trailer, which is old, uh, old Ironside, which is an American Revolutionary warship as well, but it has rocket launch, uh, not rocket launchers, uh, rocket engines attached to it, you know, you know that's, that's something interesting there. But bringing up this fact that there was another 
concept art I saw as well, which is three of them walking down a hill wearing red coats. So I can imagine there's a faction related to the United Kingdom's um, <laughs> the United Kingdom's army during the time. So two possible, like one other possible faction is that there's going to be red coats in the game. And bringing up other factions as well, like we pre, there's been information on the net and speculation that you can probably join any faction in this. I, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but I don't think we'd be able to join every faction, or we can build our own faction as well, which we can take on the bigger factions as well. And um, yeah, with building factions comes with the town creation, uh, the settlement create creation. Pretty much when Bethesda showed off the. Uh, town making ability which you build your house up it's it's kind of giving you a feeling in this fallout uh you're going home and you're building a new home so you're welcoming yourself back home and uh with building your own house and defenses people start coming to this town and it turns into a like you can ha probably have a sprawling metropolis at the end of it not too sure about the metropolis part but you could have a very decent town with trade coming in there was confirmed that you can set up car uh, Brahmin caravans to send them to different outposts and possibly different um, settlements around the map. Uh, one example, Diamond City, which is based in Fenway Park, which was a baseball stadium during its time. And uh, yeah, well, bringing up the another new thing, which was confirmed a bit a while back, which mods were finally confirmed for the PS4, which is fantastic. And um, they were confirmed on... Uh, straight away on Microsoft's press conference with on E3 which mods would be on the Xbox One there was a bit of a delay to find out if they were coming to PS4 but as far as I, I found out about the game it's um, yeah they've been pretty much uh, confirmed for PS4 so we'll be able to download mods and play them on our console version which Bethesda have put a nice little system in in case of corruptions of mod, mods you can have a your mainstay file which will be copied automatically with the modded file. So you have separate copies of your file. So if that file ever corrupts, you can go back to where you first download the mod on your normal file without mods. So that's kind of a nice addition to it. And um, with Fallout 4 coming out at least a month away now, on November 10th, uh, well, I'll, I can't wait to play it. And I also want to bring up something, that, a little special edition that's happening in my country as well. There is a... Um, a limited edition loot crate coming with our with our versions of Fallout 4, which you have to buy separate, but I am buying it. It's a Fallout 4 loot crate, which includes a piece of clothing, poster, key rings, and whatnot. I know a, a few other little go goodies. You know, I pre-booked that as well, along with Fallout 4, so I can't wait to see that on day one. And yeah, this has been the Fallout discussion. If you guys want to talk about it more or see another video about it, just leave that in the comments, and I'll get right back to it. So thanks, guys, for listening, and... uh have a nice day.